What the heck? How could it be? You stepped on the scale and you saw the same number that you saw yesterday and the day before that and heck, maybe even the week before that. It just doesn't make any sense. Your workouts have been burners. Your nutrition has been pretty good. You've even found some ways to like vegetables. So how is it that that number is still the same on the scale? Maybe you should just eat a little less or maybe you should just add some cardio or if you're really frustrated, you should just quit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you do anything crazy, Coach Short in here to tell you that you don't need to calorie slash, you don't need to add in extra cardio, and you definitely don't need to quit because this video is here to share with you the three reasons that the scale is not moving. At Complete Performance, we operate under three core pillars, fitness, fuel, and family. Funny enough, those are the same three reasons the scale gets stuck for many of us. Let's take a look at fuel first. Like you've said, you've been eating pretty good. You've made a significant number of changes. You feel like you've followed your diet plan pretty well considering. So the confusion around why the scale isn't moving makes sense. Given the popular belief that you just need to eat a little bit less, to dive a little further into a calorie deficit, it's normal that that is your temptation or your initial next steps. But I'm here to tell you that the reason that your scale isn't moving when it comes to nutrition is because your tracking is off. Yes, you've done really well. You've tracked, you've made changes, but before you go slashing calories or eliminating food groups altogether, let's take a look at how that tracking might have been thrown off. Number one, it's normal, it's human for your portion sizes to grow. We live in a super sized society wherein a small American plate is a large in most other countries. When you started, you checked the portion size on the packaging. You measured it out, maybe you even weighed it. You were darn sure that you were gonna eat exactly what you were told to do. Then you got a little bit hungry, thought a little bit here, a little bit there. Hmm. That's close enough to a half cup. What'll it hurt? Only your calorie deficit. At Complete Performance, we ask our clients to check in on their portion sizes every four to six weeks to account for that natural tendency to allow our portion sizes to grow again. The number two reason why your tracking might be off is because you might be missing snacks, bites, or nibbles. Now my grandma, she was infamous for her nibblies. And if you are too, that could be the reason that we're not seeing the scale move in that right direction. Tell me if this sounds at all familiar. You're getting food ready for the kids, throwing things on their plates. You grab a few extra grapes, a few Cheez-Its, snag a bite of a sandwich where, wherever you can, or you're celebrating at a birthday party or retirement party at the office. You pack your lunch because you're planning to be good, but all of a sudden you see that coworker brought that delicious rhubarb again and you just have to try it. Or you're at a holiday, a family event, and you swear you're not gonna have any dessert. But then it's tempting, so you have just a little tiny piece. But what could another piece hurt? And before you know it, you've had two or three tiny pieces that really add up to be bigger than the one. Trust me, those snacks, those bites, those nibbles, they really add up. To simplify things, you need to think as each one of those is equating to about 50 to 100 calories. Take a few of those and that 500 calorie deficit that we shoot for to lose one pound per week is pretty much wiped out in about five to seven bites. The number three reason your tracking might be off is that you're just eating out a little bit more than what you maybe should. Now, I get it. You're a social human being. You want to go out with family, with friends, for dinners and happy hours. You're on the go a lot. You're busy and meals have to happen. You're hungry. Or you're just human and eating out is a way to celebrate and connect with other people. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you can't eat out during a fat loss phase, but there's a fine line. You have to remember that when you go out to eat, you're giving up all control over what goes onto your plate. Can you order salads? 
lean cuts of meats, side salads, fruits. Absolutely. But you still don't know how those foods are prepared and you don't necessarily get control over their portion sizes. Remember, restaurants are cooking for profit, not often for health. So there's bound to be oils, sauces, or ingredients that aren't at the top of the quality list and that can really add up and sneak in some additional calories. Let's also not forget that restaurants are notorious for huge portion sizes, which means it doesn't necessarily add up to the calories it says that item is on the menu, nor to what fits and suits your calorie deficit. It's really no wonder it's easy for calories to add up while you're going out to eat. The second area that might be causing the scale to be stuck relates to our second pillar, fitness. At this point, you're settled into a pretty nice fitness routine. You go to the gym, you sweat it out, you get your exercises done, check, workout, done. At this point, you're probably feeling a combination of two things. Number one, frustrated. You're putting in all of this blood, sweat, and tears into these workouts. So why isn't it working? Second thing you're feeling is tempted. You're tempted to just totally abandon shit because you're just doomed to be overweight. You're never gonna have that body you dreamed of or that you once had. But you're also tempted to do a little bit more because when you started, this was working for you. So it must just be that your body adapted and that you need to push a little bit harder, add a little bit more cardio like you saw on the internet. Before we jump into how to alleviate that frustration, let's talk about that temptation. Now remember, you started this with the hope of not spending days, hours in the gym. You wanted this to be something that you could go in, get in, get out, and continue on with the rest of your busy life. We don't need to add more. You're a busy mom, spouse, partner, friend. You don't have time for that. But I know, it worked for you once before. You saw someone else do it or it's what you read on the internet. The reason you're tempted is because it's easier. It's easier to do more, to add more in, than to take a clear look and be honest about what it is that you're not doing correctly in your fat loss program. But before you start slaving away on the treadmill, adding minutes and hours of cardio in, think about what you can do to not be so frustrated, to not feel like the scale is so stuck, and to get better results overall. The first fitness reason your scale might be stuck is that you might be overestimating your activity. If there's one thing true about human nature, it's that we love to underestimate how much we eat, but overestimate how much we move. Now, that's partially due to these fancy fitness trackers we all wear. Hate to break it to you, but Stanford University found that even the most accurate of fitness trackers are still off by 27%. Ugh. But the majority of that is because we love to glorify our efforts, especially when we're trying to build a new habit. It's our way to psych ourselves up, keep ourselves motivated, get us going. Now that's great, but it's not always realistic. In order to prevent the overestimation of your activity, here are three tips to be accurate. Number one, be intentional about your activity. Set specific measures and times for when you're gonna get activity done. Our Complete Performance team is recommended to get 30 minutes of activity every single day. Whether that's all in one bout or broken up throughout the day, it's totally up to them. Number two, track your steps. This has become one of the most popularized ways to measure activity throughout the day. What I recommend is track it on a wearable ring, a wearable watch, or Go down to Walmart, pick up a pedometer, wear it on your waistband. Then at the end of the day, take a look at how many steps you got. Reflect on it. See how you can either repeat that day or improve on it in the next day. Want more information on how to reach your step goal? Click the link below for 10 steps to more steps. The third tip to prevent overestimation is challenge yourself. Don't just go in to get that workout done. Look to challenge your limits. Find out how you can work just a little bit harder each and every workout. More on this in a minute. The second reason in fitness that the scale is stuck is because you forgot about progressive overload. Now, 
I know there are days where getting to the gym and doing that workout is a victory in itself. We like to call those just happy to be here days. But it's important that not every day is just happy to be here type of day. That we're challenging our limits. We're continuing to progress and get better each and every workout. When every day becomes a just happy to be here day, you've forgotten about progressive overload. Meaning you've forgotten to improve your weights, add reps, add sets, add volume to your training to add progress. Progressive overload ensures that your body receives a new stimulus, preventing your body from adapting to training and becoming more efficient, which only leads you to burn fewer calories and get less out of your training sessions. With our complete performance team, we vary set and rep schemes weekly. We keep track of metrics and recommend more challenging variations. We also test metrics every eight to 10 weeks so that we can assess progress and program accordingly. The third reason in fitness that the scale might be stuck is that you think your workout alone is enough. Some might argue this falls under the overestimation of activity, but this has become such a common point with people that I talk to that I felt it deserved its own point. Losing weight and keeping it off requires a lifestyle, one that's different from the one that you're living now. Now, working out three to four days a week, that's an improvement, right? Absolutely. But oftentimes, just those three to four workouts aren't enough to help you lose weight at the rate that you desire to see and to keep it off long term. That requires a shift to an active lifestyle. If you're somebody who says, ooh, I worked out today, and then proceeds to sit at a desk for the remainder of the day, you have some serious work to do before you're considered to live an active lifestyle. That 45 to 60 minute workout is really just about an eighth of a day. Our clients are recommended a daily activity goal, a step goal, and the use of the three by three plan to ensure that they're moving and keeping their body going outside of their training sessions. A separate blog can be put together on this third point here, but know that just working out alone is not enough to get you your results. Our third pillar is family. And this can also be the reason that the scale isn't moving. Family is 100% about accountability to yourself and to another individual. You can be crushing it in the gym, killing it in your meal plan, but without accountability, without family, that scale is going to stall out sooner or later. Here's why. Number one, you're lacking in accountability. You may not feel like your portion sizes are growing or that you're overestimating your activity, but without somebody to check in with, without that accountability, it's only a matter of time before that does happen. We're human after all. There are two main styles of accountability. Number one, personal accountability. That's the accountability to yourself, upholding the commitments that you say that you're going to do. Number two is external accountability. That accountability to another friend, coach, mentor, family member. That's the doing the things that you say you're gonna do, but then also checking you and saying, hey, I think you need to get that done. You need both to keep the scale moving. So here's how I recommend you do that. Number one, you check in with yourself daily. Number two, you check in with an accountability partner weekly. You check in with both yourself and your accountability partner monthly. This is just to help review goals and to make sure you're on track with your long-term vision. The second component to family is that this whole thing is just catching up to you. You ever get that feeling where you just need a break from your family? Like that post-holiday feeling where you just need a vacation from your vacation? Your body's smart. It does the same thing. And after pushing for so long in a fat loss phase, it starts to recognize what you're doing. It wants to keep on to those parts because you're essentially taking parts from the whole. So it goes into this protection style mode and wants to restabilize itself and establish that normal. You feel tired because your body's been burning more calories than it's taking in. And that fatigue is your body's way of protecting itself, pulling you to lower activity to keep those calories inside and not let so many get burned off. You feel hungry and tired because your body's taking in less fuel than what it's accustomed to. The fatigue is your body's way of trying to right the ship, aka burn fewer calories. The hunger signals are your body's way of saying, hey, 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 let's restock those fuels and get back to normal. 
they're both signs that the fat loss phase is catching up to you. They're also both totally normal in any fat loss phase. But without some attention, they're destined to slow that scale progress down. Remember, don't diet forever. Seasonal dieting is a very valuable skill. Don't be afraid to take diet breaks. Celebrate the holidays. Take some time while you're on vacation. Allow your body and mind to reset. And last, be 100% confident that this fits your lifestyle. The third component to family comes down to stress management. Yet another shout out to that pesky hormone, cortisol. Many forget the impact of stress on fat loss because these days, who isn't stressed? Unmanaged, stress leads to poorer food selection, stressed out binges, lower quality workouts, and a cortisol buildup in the area nobody wants, your midsection, where everybody's trying to burn that last bit of fat. Between work, family, and your social life, you have plenty to stress over. But do you know what makes that worse? Stressing over what the scale says. If you find that you're just going through a little bit more stress or that you're totally stressed out, acknowledge it and know that the scale might not move at the rate that you want to because of this stress. It's not because of your lack of effort. It's just the cortisol needing to work through your system for stress levels to lower again and for you to get back to your normal routine. Take a little extra time for self-care. Do something you love and remember that your consistency is ultimately the secret to your fat loss results. If you want to know how consistency became the secret to fat loss, click the link below to grab your copy of our latest blog, Consistency, The Secret to Fat Loss.